All right. I'm going to read you an email that I got. Aloha, Judy. How are you doing? I am David Larson from Nashville, Tennessee. I have been on the lookout for artworks in regards to my wife's and my wedding anniversary, which is just around the corner. I stormed onto some of your works to find, which I find quite impressive and intriguing. I must admit, you are doing quite an amazing job. You are undoubtedly good at what you do. That being said, I would like to purchase one of, or two of your works as a surprise gift to my wife. It would be a great help if you could send me pictures of your piece of work with their respective prices and sizes ready for immediate or close to immediate sales. My budget for this is within the price range of $1,000 to $5,000. I look forward to reading from you in a view to knowing more about your piece of inventory. As a matter of importance, I would also like to know if you accept checks as a means of payment. Best regards. David Larson. So I get maybe one of these scammy letters every couple months. Um, it is the classic artist scam letter. Apparently there's, you know, and sometimes it's somebody that's out at sea that, you know, that can't, that can't physically get there and they'll send their shipping agent. That also is involved in the, you know, these artist scam letters. But basically some of the red flags are Things like saying, in regards to, that's one of the words that they always say. And they always say, I must admit, you're quite good at what you do. And one of the funner things that I thought, or funnier things that I thought was where it says, I stormed onto, which I didn't know if that was like a, a new phrase that the kids are using. I didn't really understand it. So I looked it up in the Urban Dictionary. And the Urban Dictionary says, apparently, to storm is to have an angry outburst, usually accompanied by a battery of foul language. And here it is used in a sentence. Pete was so angry, he was asked to wear a mask at Trader Joe's. He stormed for a good half hour before he settled down, put on his mask, and bought his hummus. So, those were all red flags. The number one red flag with all these, you know, scam art letters is I was looking for a gift for my wife and my anniversary. And so basically nowadays, nobody can look for a gift for their spouse's anniversary without somebody thinking it's a scam. But that is exactly what I do. I do look for gifts for my husband and my anniversary and birthdays and Christmases. And um, because it's this wonderful win-win thing, I it, it's a wonderful win-win thing because I get to decorate his office with the art that I buy and then I get to see it too so it's kind of like this win-win where you know you but you're basically buying art for yourself you know that's the big secret but it's technically for him so um so basically I'm going to introduce you to my husband's office right here which happens to be right next to my office which is decorated with a little bit of non-curated transitional clutter chic and some gorgeous drawings by people that I love. Uh, but I'm gonna, we're here to talk about my husband's office, which is slightly nicer. I, uh, the wall color here is painted this ochre color, which to me, decorating a place that's gonna be messy, which this place is, you know, it's an office, it's gonna be messy. Um, you kind of need to have some good bones to it. And so the good bones are a nice strong color for the backdrop of everything. So it doesn't look so, here's a bunch of white clutter laying around and white papers and white, you know, bills and stuff like that, all looking all washed out. Um, also, I've got the, the brown uh, dark oak desk items, which kind of give it a little bit of a classic mission style feel to it. So it's good bones made for mess. Um, one of my concepts with messiness essentially is if a place is going to be messy, make it make the mess be comfortable in this place that it's going to be. Instead of spending all your time cleaning up and pretending like you can fit everything into the little, you know, pockets of whatever baskets that you have on the wall and stuff like that, like in the Martha Stewart, you know, offices that people have. Nobody's office really looks like that. Um, so, with an eye to that, with regards to that, um, I also decorate with the art. And art has the wonderful distinction 
of doing the same thing that like a scarf or a beautiful necklace does, where it draws your eye upward to the beauty up, up above and away from your, you know, hips and belly and stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna start off with two pieces of mine that I actually uh, painted specifically for my husband for birthdays. Um, this one is one of my very few interiors where I did a little bit of a sergeanty thing with my son uh, playing pool because that's one of the things that they like to do together. So that I, you know, painted for for posterity. Over here is a painting of um, an orchid because my husband at one point had a bunch of orchids that he was trying to you know bring back from the dead. He they they are they spend nine months out of the year being sticks doing nothing. And then they come back to life, you know, when you do the right things, like during that nine months. And so when one of them bloomed beautifully, I did a painting for one of our anniversaries or presents. Um, the next one right here has the distinction, uh, it, this is by Rose Franson, it has the distinction of getting me kicked off Facebook, which is why this version of the video is only on YouTube. It's not on the Facebook Live show. Um, because it is nudity, even though Facebook's community standards say you can have nudity in paintings, but I guess they, their bots flagged it and it looks, you know, so good. It looks like a photograph. So they, they flagged it essentially. But Rose Franson is one of my favorite artists. Um, she is the one that did the portrait of Makokata project, portrait project, where she painted 180 people from her hometown of Makokata, Iowa. And the show ended up going to the National Portrait Gallery uh, in Washington, D.C. It is also at the um, Cedar Falls, Iowa Figgy Museum as a permanent installation there. And that's one of my road trips that I definitely want to take one of these days before too long. Um, the reason I love this portrait, I stumbled upon it. And when I was in Colorado a couple of years ago, uh, for the Sight Unseen show at the Abend Gallery. It was curated by Alia Albermani, and um, during the daytime, a bunch of us artists went looking, you know, gallery hopping around uh, Colorado, which is a, or Del Denver, Colorado, which is a really fun place to, to hang out. Um, so in our gallery hopping, we went to Gallery 1261, which is the sister gallery of the Abend Gallery that we were showing at. And I uh, went to the back room. If you're ever in a gallery that you like, ask to see the back room because the back room, there will be even more stuff that you like there. They have racks and racks of things that from previous shows, sometimes you can see work by artists that you've only seen online. Uh, if you know that they're you know, represented by that gallery. And if you want them if, to see works by a particular artist that you're interested in, ask them. They will love to show you. And it's also good for the artist because it makes the artist look like they have, you know, a, a following and they're popular. So maybe the gallery will promote them more. So you're doing a big win-win by going to a gallery and asking to see the back room and asking to see the artists you like. Rose Franson happens to be one of the artists I not only like, but love. Um, she's also kind of a kindred spirit in that she likes painting the old people with a lot of character. She has said in her book herself that it's much more difficult to paint young, pretty people, young, youthful, youthful, pretty people. In fact, this painting is, she very, you know, honestly called it pretty girl where I don't know what to do with a pretty girl, number one. And you can go up a little bit so that it's a little, little censored just because just in case YouTube's gonna do the same thing. Though for YouTube, I always do the 18 plus thing. So hopefully it's okay. Um, but anyway, so this, I love the way that she painted this because, because she painted a beautiful woman, nude, with a lot of dignity. It doesn't have that sort of schmarmy, woman unobserved kind of look to it, like where she's sexy and she doesn't even know it. She's wearing a filmy little gown. She's looking out the window and um, you're kind of voyeuristic. I always prefer the paintings where the woman is aware that she's posing. She can choose to be sexual. She can choose to be not sexual. She can, but she's complicit in the whole thing. So that's, that's always one of the things that I love. 
And this is just about the time when Facebook suddenly kicked me off. So I'm gonna stop and then we'll get ready for the edit or where I continue the rest of the show, the PG half of the show. Okay, well, that was an interesting development. Um, apparently, Facebook is watching, the bots are watching, or the sensors are watching, and they thought my pa the painting of the, the woman by Rose Franson was a photograph. You know, it's the huge compliment, like, oh, it's so good, it looks like a photograph. So they thought it was a photograph of a nude woman, and that violated their community standards. So... That's one, this is one of the things where my response to that always is look at your actual community standards because in the community standards on Facebook, they do say paintings of nudity are okay. Nudity in art is okay. Breastfeeding images are okay. They actually say that, but I think their bots probably recognize boobs. So anyway, we're gonna not focus on that, but I will continue to the next one. But I will tell you just a little bit more about the Rose Franson painting without looking at it. You'll just have to remember it. Um, it basically, I got it at the event or at the uh, Gallery 1261. And it was really fun because it jump started the art karma for the night. Because when I bought that painting for my husband, um, later that night, the painting that I had in the show actually sold. So uh, art karma sometimes works that way and sometimes I'm the first one to jump start it. And sometimes it goes the opposite way, which is what I'm doing with all my sales during this time where when I get a sale, um, I pay 50% of the profits forward into the struggling um, art community with uh, COVID right now. But anyway, let's, let's move on to the PG, PG half of this show. Um, over here, I've got a gorgeous painting by uh, Arabella Proffer. This one is, um, if you remember who Arabella Proffer is, a couple weeks ago, I had talked about her work and showed you some of the tiny gems of hers that I have that uh, decorate my curated clutter buffet in the dining room. She's the one that wrote the uh, Restrooms of Cleveland book and also the National Portrait Gallery of Kessa. This particular painting was at the, um, this particular painting was at the Bay Arts. She had a show called Ephemeral Anecdotes, which was um, basically, she does these gorgeous little portraits uh, about different healthcare procedures that have been used throughout the centuries and the ages, like barbaric little bizarre healthcare procedures and uh, she did these macabre little portraits of them. Um, because my husband is an ophthalmologist, the eye theme one called ocular, prosthes ocular prosthesis really jumped out at me and I thought it was just a cool thing. She even wrote a little description which accompanied the piece. Um, the name of the, of the woman in the painting is Avina. And here's her description. The daughter of a minor prince Avina's right eye was crushed due to a riding accident. Only the best tools and surgeon were brought in to save it. But when she found the fine Venetian glass eye was ill-fitting, she had her lid sewn shut in a fit of desperation. Unchastened, she rebounded in society and even carried her glass eye with her to keep an eye on would-be foes and to scare small children. So I thought that was really fun that Arabella writes these things to go with the, you know, with her paintings. Um, and it's got some gorgeous little detail, like all those little tools up there, I'm sure were used to, I don't even know what they're, they're look, they look pretty scary. They were used to remove somebody's eye and give them a glass eye. I don't know. But moving along with the eye theme, this next piece in this corner is by Mitsura Salgian. And this one is just a gorgeous, gorgeous little gem. Her, the, some of her details on here are amazing. 
Um, it is called thir the third eye. And in uh, philosophy, the third eye is the fictitious, invisible eye that sits in your forehead that knows a little bit more than what the, your two actual eyes can see. It's sort of like an ESP type thing. And um, we saw Mitsura's work and met her for the first time when I was showing with her at the Salma Gandhi Art Club as part of a, a larger juried show. And I saw one of her pieces, which was this beautiful floral, floral piece. And, um, it, and my husband really liked it a lot. And so I just kind of made a mental note because I loved her work and I had never seen anything by her before. So I wanted to see more. I wanted to, you know, see what she had. So I went home making that mental note and I stormed onto her website um, and found all kinds of pieces that were absolutely stunning. And luckily one of the ones that was still available was the third eye. And um, so I contacted her and we worked out a deal and it now sits in uh, my husband's office and I got it for him for his, for his birthday, which he absolutely loved. All right, let's pan around the office a little bit. We've got this gorgeous piece up here by Judy Brandon, Judith Brandon, who is a Cleveland artist. I actually went to school with her. She was one, I, I can't remember now whether she graduated the year after me or before me, but um, she's one of the, uh, she does these amazing environmentally conscious pieces. Um, like really big ones that are, you know, all about the environment and saving the planet and climate change and saving animals that go extinct. And um, they're really, you know, they're not figurative. They're, they're very sort of abstract, landscape-y, gorgeous things. And so, and this one fit beautifully in that space right above the screen door. So, I'm gonna proceed now, wrap things up by doing a big reveal for the piece that I got for him for Father's Day, which is the most recent, most recent acquisition. Um, this piece is by Kimberly Beck. It is a bluebird. And I don't know if every, anybody that takes notes in this show a couple weeks ago, I talked about how my husband has bird feeders and he loves seeing the hummingbirds. And we have various bird feeders stationed around the house so that we can look out the window and watch the birds. That's something that us us old boomers like to do. It's just kind of fun to talk about them. One of the birds, the other birds that are a little bit rare and we almost never see are, is the uh, bluebird. bluebird. Not, not to be confused with the blue jay because the blue jays are kind of a little bit the bully of the pecking order. They kind of, you know, push out the other birds and they're a little bit bigger than everybody. But the blue birds are these gorgeous little treasures that we very rarely get to see. So when Kimberly posted um, that she was working on this piece with this beautiful gold leaf background, I was very excited and I contacted her. And um, she said that it was slated for a show at the Jay Petter Gallery. So it wasn't for sale right at that moment, but um, she let me know when it was. And so I stayed awake and paid attention. And when I saw that it went up, um, that it was gonna be at the Jay Petter Gallery and the show was starting. And I can't remember whether it was a physical show or a virtual show, because it was all during Corona times. Uh, but I know that I could buy it online. Um, I went looking for it and I found it and um, the gallery, they, they sent it so beautifully packaged. I wish I could show you the beautiful packaging. They also sent a certificate of authenticity, which was amazing. And they also included this gorgeous little book that Kimberly had with many of her bird, bird paintings in it. And that was just like a really classy, nice, nice, nice little touch. And um, it's a, just a beautiful painting. It actually, I love, one of the things I love about it is it's actually a thing. It's got a thick, a thick frame like this. You can just sit it on the shelf and, you know, you can hang it, but you can just sit it on a shelf. So right now that's where it is. I'm not sure whether, where it will ultimately end up, but I'm thinking it looks pretty good there. So that is... So far, my husband's 
art collection that I got for him over the years for different holidays and stuff. Um, thank you for joining me tonight on Living Figuratively, and thank you for staying with me while I was banned the first time and then had to like do it again. Um, and be sure to join me next week when there will be nothing objectionable, no nipples or anything like that to scare Facebook. Uh, next week we will be talking back, which means we'll be talking about figurative work from the back. And um, it'll be same back time, same back channel, Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Y'all come back now, you hear?